The followers of three religions make up over half of the world's population. All of these faiths share common roots. One of them is Jerusalem. Shabbat is the Hebrew word for Sabbath. It begins at sundown on Friday. During this time, Jews put aside all earthly cares and focus fully on God. No cameras are allowed at the Western Wall during Shabbat, so all I have are the sounds of those prayers and video taken at other times that will give you only a small glimpse of what Shabbat is like here in Jerusalem. Here is a very special place. Uh, like this word, this word, this word, this word, this word. I mean, this is the land, the promised land, the ground. I mean, we have, have a nation that left the land for 2,000 years and returned. For hours, I just sat and watched as thousands of Jews approach the wall and pray. A friend connected me with Yaakov Schneider, a former Israeli foreign emissary who has now dedicated his life to connecting young people from all faiths in order to seek peace and understanding in this region. When you walk through the old city, what does what do those places mean to you? But there is a spirit in this place. You know, you close your eyes and you feel that there is something above this, about the reality of life. I had once uh, something in our family that I didn't find the answer to. And I'm secular, I'm not religious in, in many ways. I'm not practicing this religion. But I went to Jerusalem and I went to the Western world. And surprising, I got the answer. There, it's, a, it's kind of a mystery. Why there? And the solution came while I was there. And it's just a story, you know. Uh, the fact that I went there, or Jerusalem have a meaning for me, it's this story represented. The, the, the oldest religion of all these religions is the, is the Jewish one. Yes. That's right. So, uh, so when they went to copy, so that's where they, they took it from. Uh huh. So do you believe that that all of them are right, or if they're right, they can be right? <laughs> Palestine has been the traditional Jewish homeland for thousands of years. Even though they were exiled several times, most recently for nearly two thousand years, Palestine is their home once again. You know, the creation of the state of Israel was created by secular Jews. And that was the idea. Because we couldn't bring here the old tradition, um, kind of religious, orthodox way of Eastern Europe. We were not succeeding to build this nation if we were Hasidic from East Europe. No way. This country won't be established. When I grew up here, it was hidden that there are the others. I grew up in Haifa. Haifa is a mixed city of Jews and Arabs. I didn't know that there are Arabs in the city that I grew up. It was hidden from us because we took care of our Jewish uh, and new Israeli state. We refused to talk any other language than Hebrew. I reject the language of my parents of Russian and Yiddish, okay, only Hebrew. We are the new product of the new Israeli. And slowly, slowly, year after, I realized that there are these other people here that live here next to us. And Israel is still a young place. Right. 
It is a young country. Isn't it's it? a very young country. The modern state of Israel. It's a very young country. Did uh, miracles and did some failures. The dominance of the state of Israel is inescapable in and around Jerusalem. This plays right into my preconceived notions of Israel and its fight to maintain control and settle their homeland. But Yaakov explains that that's not exactly true. There are three primary schools of thought among Jews about their place here. So there are these people that live here, the ultra-ultra-orthodox, which we call Haredim. They don't believe in the existing of the state of Israel. So till this moment that the Messiah will come down, for Mount of Olives, which is just in front of us. Uh, it's not up to us to create anything new, like the state of Israel or the new temple. It's up to the Messiah when the Messiah will come. Listen, the Orthodox religious Jews believe that, that uh, until the Messiah comes, you don't do anything in force. Okay. To be decided from upstairs. Not the... Yeah, so it's God's decision, not ours. Yes. And then we have this other extremist, what in English we call them the modern Orthodox Jews, that basically they're the majority of the settlers that settled in Judea and Samaria after the 67 war. Because they believe in the idea of the big one Israel that was given to us by God, Abraham, and it's from Iraq to the Mediterranean. It would have been uh, better without us. Uh, there would have been less wars, uh, less conflicts. So war and conflict is destroying this place, isn't it? Yes. Finally, there is probably what is the majority, at least among secular Jews, those who believe that there is a path to peace and coexistence. And my belief is that we are, in this amazing city, it should be open to the whole world equally. Uh, unfortunately, religion many times, the interpretation of religion, create the most terrible wars in the world. We have to heal ourselves from this fear of the other. Fear of others. There seems to be a theme that keeps coming up in my conversations here. A misunderstanding of the meaning of this sacred place between neighbors. A fear that reaching out across the aisle might somehow devalue the ritual and tradition that is so important to each faith. Honestly, this is a struggle we face everywhere. But in Israel, it's out in the open and staring you in the face. I'm left with a lot to think about as Shabbat comes to an end, and I begin to look towards Sunday, where I will explore the importance of Jerusalem for Christians, the largest of these three faiths. On the next episode of Three. There is no uh, self-respect and self-esteem of the human being. Is this a holy site? To me, I find even the Church of the Holy Sepulchre like a zoo. If Jesus Christ were alive and he comes today, he will just kick them out like he did with the money changers. Visit storyof3.net to subscribe and learn more about three.